Well, good morning. It's a beautiful day to be in God's house. Amen. As we get started with this morning's announcements, are there any birthdays or anniversaries that we can celebrate? Okay. If not, um, as you can see this morning, uh, we will be partaking in communion uh, together. And also, uh, this morning, uh, Jace is going to be baptized at the 11 o'clock service. Uh, so for those who would like to stay and support him, uh, it will take place at the beginning of the service. Uh, so Jace will be being baptized at 11. Uh, so we praise the Lord for that. Also, um, on Wednesday night, we're going to be beginning a new study. Uh, I am a church member uh, by Tom Rayner. Uh, if you would like to be a part of that, I would encourage you to please join us on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. as we go through this uh, study together. So I'd like to extend an invitation uh, for that as well. Uh, I believe that's all for uh, this morning's announcements. So at this time, if you will, stand as we go to the Lord in praise and worship. Hey, good morning. Can y'all hear me? Brian, is my, I don't think the pulpit mic or my mic's on. Testing one, two. I'm sorry. Well, sometimes, but there's probably been times y'all probably wish the main volume was cut down. Um, but hey, good morning. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Do me a favor. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm so glad you're here. God bless you. I hope, I hope you just told the truth. Um, but uh, Pastor Zach did exactly what I, I asked him to do this morning. But uh, 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 please, uh, we're going to be, be I, I just want to say this. If, 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 if God is working with you to, uh, to maybe join the local church here at Soldier Bay, we're going to be beginning this on Wednesday night. It's going to be six sessions. Uh, we're going to do a uh, a, a soft beginning of it on uh, Wednesday night at seven o'clock. So come be a part of it. It's gonna we're gonna be talking about the value or the value that's in being a church member. If your schedule doesn't work out and you're still interested, uh, I, I know I've got a family now that's interested in joining. We're trying to get our schedules together. Uh, so we'll we'll if you're interested, let me know or Pastor Zach know, and we'll definitely handle it. But this is where the Lord was leading uh, us on Wednesday night. Uh, Today, uh, of course, it doesn't just have to be today, but uh, thank the Lord. I don't know the numbers, but um, uh, our Annie Armstrong Easter offering an emphasis on prayer. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, they'll, they'll get me numbers later, and that's okay, but whatever's done, we know God is going to bless it, but uh, uh, we'll still kind of extend that throughout the day, if you don't mind. Uh, we're not going to do a video this morning, a testimony this morning. We got a little bit to do, but uh, I just want to thank you for being here this morning. In just a few minutes, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and we've added this morning uh, infant Charlie Ramsey, infant Fletcher Nance, um, and uh, please be in prayer for, uh, for Toby Babson. Uh, yesterday, uh, I responded to Toby's home. Uh, he was in cardiac arrest in the yard. Uh, they worked uh, probably, as we say, that code uh, for around 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, prayers were being lifted. I was there praying with the family, Miss Lori and all of them, and uh, they got a heart rate back, and he started breathing on his own. Uh, just uh, the hand of God touched him, and we praised him for that. He was transported to Grand Strand Regional. Uh, I spoke to Scotty and Tiffany last night. Uh, he is still critical, um, uh, so please continue to be in prayer for uh, Brother Toby Babson. Uh, are there any other outspoken requests at this time? Greg Evans family and Jamie Davis. 
Brother, I always, I always welcome happy. Yeah, uh, hey Larry. <laughs> yeah, Larry was with us Wednesday night, and uh, yeah, it, it, what a blessing to see Larry with us tonight, uh, this morning. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we bow before you this morning. Uh, we thank you for uh, uh, the privilege of being able to come into your house of worship this morning. It's just like Pastor Zach said, what a privilege and a blessing. Uh, it is to be here this morning, Lord. I, I just, I just want to take a second and just say thank you for, uh, uh, for this building. Thank you uh, that we we have a place together. Thank you for the blessing of this structure this morning, um, and Lord, I just want to praise you for that. Not only do I want to thank you for the structure, I want to thank you for the people that have gathered here this morning. Such a special day in the life of Soldier Bay. Every day is special. Every Sunday is worshipful. Uh, but this morning, Lord, uh, uh, we're reminded uh, of the Lord's uh, sacrifice this morning. Uh, in, in just a few moments, Lord, uh, we're literally going to be sliding our feet under your table. And Lord, I even ask even now that you begin to, uh, uh, to do a work in our life. Uh, Lord, I pray that uh, we seek forgiveness of our sins this morning. Uh, Lord, I pray that you, you clean us up. Uh, before we show up to sit down at your table. Lord, I pray this morning for our prayer list. Lord, the names that have been called out in our sanctuary this morning. Lord, for the names that are being called out and situations that are being lifted up to you even now from the hearts of your people. Father, I pray that you draw near to each and every one of them. And then as you draw near, Lord, as always, I pray for, for us to be obedient and to be sensitive to the needs of others and us to be uh, faithful to praying for others and praying for each other. Heavenly Father, we do lift up Toby to you, Mr. Toby to you this morning and ask for again for your touch and for healing. Lord, I pray right now, even at Grand Strand, you strengthen his heart. Heavenly Father, you oxygenate his brain. And you be with the family as they stand by waiting to hear that good word. Heavenly Father, I, I pray for our country right now. I pray for our leaders. Lord, we thank you for America. We thank you for the freedom that we have. God, we ask that you bless every man and woman that is serving in a uniform that protects our country. Be with their families. Heavenly Father, help us to not be here this morning out of habit but help us to be here this morning out of affection and adoration for you and what you've done for us. God, we thank you for salvation. We thank you for Jesus this morning. Now, Lord, we ask and we pray that everything that is said, done, sung, and preached and taught and read brings glory and honor to you. Heavenly Father, it was your Son, Jesus Christ, that said, If I be lifted up, I will draw men unto me. So, Lord, may we lift your name up this morning. Your character, the person that you are, your humanity, your deity. So others may be drawn to you this morning, to the family of God. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, Amen. Like it? You want me to fix it? You want me to fix it? You handle that for me. Check, check. There we go. Will you stand? Oh, my words 
shore. I've got nothing here. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often do, but every song must end, and you never do.
Amen. I hope you brought your hallelujah with you this morning. Amen. What a blessing. Thank you, Pastor Zach, that choir. Thank you, Miss Rhonda. God bless you. Thank you. Hey, to our, uh, I, I haven't done this in a while, but to our online congregation, thank you for being with us this morning. God bless you. I know Tina and Rick are watching us this morning, and we just want to say hey to each and every one of you this morning. God bless you. Thank you. Deacons, if you'll join me up front, please, and as they come, if you'll prepare your hearts and minds, as I mentioned in my prayer, to slide our feet under the Lord's table this morning. I'm, I'm not, don't take this wrong, but one thing that we, we've always done here at Soldier Bay since I've been attending 20 plus years um, is we've always had a tablecloth on the, on the communion table. And uh, I, I, I started paying attention to something, just noticed something. What was interesting to me is um, I, don't know how, I don't know how many times you, you pay attention, but when you walk into a church and the communion table is here, uh, more than likely, it'll always have the words in front of it in remembrance of me. And and it always kind of, again, don't get mad at me, it always kind of bothered We covered up those words during communion. And uh, so the, the Lord blessed us, um, uh, and, and we got a tablecloth now that has embossed or embroidered on it in remembrance of me. And, and that's exactly the reason we come and, and take part of the Lord's Supper. Uh, there's two things. we. I know what y'all think. You better get back where you're supposed to be. I ain't going to do it. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. There's two things we do at this table. Two things. It's what Christ said to us. You know what he said? He said, remember. You know what else he said? He said, repent. Repent. In just a few minutes, we, we all know how this works, but in just a few minutes, the deacons are going to and, and, and myself included, if you're an ordained minister or deacon, uh, just, just keep serving. Don't, don't take part because uh, Pastor Zach and myself are going to serve you this morning. So I want to share that with our, if you're a guest here this morning, you're an ordained deacon, you'll, you'll, I'll tell you what to do, when to do it. But one thing that, one of the first things they're going to do is you're going to receive, you're going to receive the bread. And I want to, I know you often think that this is, he's very scripted sometimes. Well, the Lord just spoke to me uh, about this morning, and I just want to share something different with you this morning, if I may. Would you do me a favor? When you get that bread, I, I want to invite you to do something. Because last year, last year, last Sunday, I invited you to come to the cross. Can you all say amen there? I invited you to come to the cross. But this morning, I'm inviting you to come to the table. And so is the Lord. You're going to receive his body, symbolically. And as you hold that piece of bread this morning, I want you to think about the body of our Lord as he hung on that cross. Pastor Zach, will you lead us in prayer?
ordained deacon or minister, would you please stand? Think about the body. Jesus said, this is my body, which has been broken for you. Eat. Eat all of it. And this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, Brother Don Stanley, would you lead us in prayer? Father, as we uh, take this moment to think about the blood that was shed by your son for our salvation, knowing that hanging on that cross that he bled out, it was all for love of us. And it was his love. serving of each other. It's the unity of each other in the body of Christ.
备したい This is what Jesus said. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Oh, no, wait just a second. For as often as ye drink, excuse me, as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death. How long? Until he comes. This is the blood of Christ. Drink all that. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. If you have a copy of God's Word, I would love for you to turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. And I've titled our time together this morning, A Gift from Above. Uh, children's Church, some have already uh, transitioned down, but Children's Church downstairs at this time. In Ephesians chapter 4, we're going to look at verse 7 through 9 this morning. The gift that's from above. Have you ever heard the statement, if every church member was just like me, what kind of church would this church be? If every church member was just like me, what kind of church would this church be? It's kind of what Paul has been dealing with in Ephesians chapter 4, because in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6, he's, he's been, we've been looking at and we've been talking about the unity of believers. Uh, that's the reason this morning as we, came, as we come together to partake in the Lord's Supper, uh, we, we each... Uh, Y'all kind of watch me. I know you do it. Nothing wrong with it. But you kind of watch me for the cue to eat the bread. You watch me for the cue to drink the cup. And, and we do that together because uh, of the body of Christ. The, the coming together, that what Paul's been talking about, that unity of believers. But things are getting, look at me for just a second. Things are, he's getting ready to shift gears. He's getting ready to change here. And what he's doing is he's going to leave the unity of believers and he's now getting ready to get into, and we begin that in verse 7. Uh, he begins not the unity of believers, but the uniqueness of believers. The uniqueness of believers. But before he does that, in other words, we're getting ready to get into one of the three sections in the New Testament about the spiritual gifts uh, that, uh, that has come down from heaven in each and every believer uh, that, we, that has been deposited in our life, the spiritual gift, from the Holy Spirit. It was James that said, margin of Scripture, James 1.17, it was James that said that every good and perfect gift comes from above. So watch what Paul does. He says, okay, before, I, before we get to the uniqueness of the believers and where these spiritual gifts or gifts come from that's deposited into the life of each and every believer at the moment of salvation, uh, before we, watch this now, before we get to the uniqueness of believers about the gift, I want everybody to know where the gift comes from. And, and that's what he begins in verse 7. Look with me, please, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7. If you're there, say amen. Now listen to what Paul says. He says, but to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Verse 9. 
This is a parenthetical statement. More likely in your Bible, you see this in parentheses. It's almost, and I'm going to explain this a little bit more in detail a little bit later on. But notice it's, it's, it's a parenthetical statement. He, he wants him to also know this. Now this, he ascended. What does it mean but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. The word of God for the people of God. And the people of God said, Amen. I want you to know there's two things this morning I'm going to show you real quickly. The first truth that I want you to see is that the giver is God. The giver is God. Remember, we're, it's not unity, it's the uniqueness. And what Paul does, oftentimes, look at verse 7. Look at verse 7. What's the first word in verse 7? Three words, three letters, but. Now, when we see but, we, we, we know how that works and we know how that uh, maneuvers a uh, 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 thought or sentences. Uh, but it's not working here. Listen to me for just a second, just a little bit of Bible study. It's not working here as a conjunction. A conjunction is what uh, but and for all that. It, it connects thoughts. Paul was not connecting a thought there. In, in other words, this but is bringing a contrast. It, it's bringing a contrast. In other words, we could put, not that I would, but we could put there instead of but, we could put on the other hand. He wants us to know, uh, getting into this section about we'll, we'll dive right into spiritual gifts, but we can't plow over this. For, uh, we can't just read this and, and, and not understand what Paul's trying to, uh, to get for us to understand. But he's saying on the other hand. So why does he do that? Well, you don't have to turn there because I'm going to read it for you. He's linking everything back to this part. He's linking everything back to what he's previously said. A margin scripture is that is Ephesians 1.3. Because in Ephesians 1.3, uh, Paul said that God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. So he's getting that train of thought back on what he's already written. But he also, there's another part of this in Ephesians 2, 4, and 5. Ephesians 2, 4, and 5. He says, but God. There it is again. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. We talked about this. We preached this. We taught this. Uh, 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 Paul is saying it's because of Jesus. By the way, it's because of Jesus that you're alive this morning. Uh, spiritually. Uh, it, it's because We were dead. You know where you wouldn't be if you weren't spiritually alive? You'd be in a grave. You would be spiritually dead. In other words, all God has given us, all God has given us, every good and perfect gift comes from above. Don't forget that. It's not luck. It's God. It's God. Everything you have, God has given you. And by the way, everything you need, God will supply that. I didn't say everything you want. I want a Z71, y'all. We all, we all pray. I'm just kidding. Look, he's every, hey, everything we need. Some of y'all wanted me to say F-150. I ain't going to do it. But, but listen, uh, look, all, God is, all we need, God will give us. But here's the thing, y'all. Everything we need, God has given us. Everything we have, God has given us. But he hasn't given it to us. We don't have it because we deserve it. We get it because God gave it to us. The gifts. The gift, the blessings, they come from God. God is the giver. He is the giver. We didn't deserve it, but he still gave. Watch this. Watch this. Okay, we're going to be good Methodists this morning. Watch this. John 3, 16. Let's say it together. Here we go. We may say it a little bit different, but I promise you we're going to start. We're going to end at the exact same place. You ready? Everybody ready? One, two, three. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Who gave? Who's the giver? It's God. It's God is the giver. I want you to do me a favor. You don't have to turn there, but I want you to write this down. I've got it on the screen for you. I want you to understand something this morning. Uh, to, to be able, y'all, I want us to understand literally what it truly actually means to come and take part of the Lord's Supper. Paul wants us to understand uh, 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 that the giver is God. The, the gift was Jesus Christ. And we didn't deserve Him. It's not about what, who we are and what we got. It's about who God is and what He gave. More specifically, 
who he gave for us. Is this making sense? I, for us to be able to, look at me for just a second, for us to be able to understand truly who we are as Christians, and that's what Paul was trying to do, the identity of the Christian, the identity of the church. Paul gives us, not in Ephesians, but he gives us in Romans. I want you to, uh, I want you to watch this. I'm gonna, that's kind of shrunk a little bit uh, on the screen, but it's okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to turn there. In and, 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 and Romans 5, I just want you to hear and pay attention to a couple of things. I want you to understand I want you to understand how we're described, how we're described before we're Christians. Now watch this. In Romans chapter 5, beginning in verse 5. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Did y'all hear me? The Holy Spirit was given to us. But listen to verse 6. He begins describing Notice the words. I've got them underlined for you. I don't know why I shrunk on the screen, but that's okay. But uh, 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 listen to the words of how he described us before we became Christian. For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrated his own love towards us. In that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, having now been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through Him. For when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God. Through the death of His Son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. Notice the four words that Paul uses here prior to coming to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. How we, because sometimes we look at ourselves, uh, we have a lot of pride if we're not careful. But sir, man, we're dead without Christ. Christ has given us life. The first word that he gave us there in Romans 5, 5 through, 12, uh, 5 through 10, is he said we were helpless. Without Christ, we're helpless. We have no strength whatsoever. And not just physically, not just mentally, but also spiritually, y'all. And by the way, we do not have enough to strength. We do not have enough strength to save ourselves. Uh, some people think that uh, I, I had a I had a thought uh, this morning. Is a, uh, please get connected to Sunday school this morning. Get connected to Sunday school. I know y'all get tired of me saying it, but listen to me. If you want to give Jesus an hour, give him Sunday school. Did you hear what I just said? Don't come hear me. Go get connected to your Sunday school classes. This morning, you've got, I'm not teaching the Sunday school lesson, but hear me. I just want to share with you a, a, a thought that I had this morning. When Jesus is following the resurrection, uh, Jesus is, is, is going to the disciples, and he's talking to them, and he, and, he, and he walks them through the Old Testament about how the Old Testament points to the, the, the death, burial, and the resurrection. Uh, and and, and, and it's, it's only by Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection that we can be saved. It's only by the blood. And the one reason Jesus takes him back to the, the New Testament hasn't been written yet, obviously, but the reason he takes him back to the Old Testament is because the only, the only way you could, get, you could ever get remission of sin is by the shedding of the blood. That is the system. That is the plan. It's also the man that God sent us. So, so there, it had, for us to receive eternal life, Jesus Christ had to die. And we receive that ret- eternal life when we place our faith in him. Why? It's the shedding of blood. That's what the Old Testament, watch this now. The Old Testament, the blood covered the sin. But in the New Testament, Jesus is the only one that can cleanse the sin. There's, it's never to be brought up again. Never, ever. Your wife may bring up what you've done. Your husband may bring up what you've done. But Jesus will never bring up what you've done. Ever. Y'all quit elbowing each other. We can't save ourselves when we were helpless. And some people think, well, I, I, you know, I'll live, I'll die, and the wheels on the bus go round and round. Okay. Do me a favor. You won't be able to, but I would love to know how that works out for you in eternity. By the way, I know how it's going to work out for you in eternity based upon the Word of God. No. You'll be eternally separated from the Lord forever. He says we're helpless. Not only, did you notice he said we're ungodly? The ungodly, by nature, we reject God. Some of you may be sitting here this morning. You've come in with an attitude, with a chip on your shoulder. I hope you haven't. 
Maybe you've come here wanting to learn. Maybe you've come here wanting to deepen your walk with uh, your spiritual walk, that, that maturity. But uh, naturally, y'all, by nature, we reject God. And uh, that's just by nature. It's that Adamic nature that's in us from Grandpa Adam. We reject God. That is scripture. That is biblical. And Paul says we're ungodly. And the only way we can receive that righteousness is through Jesus Christ. He says we're helpless, we're ungodly. And, and then he, he still hasn't got to really a strong word yet. But, but then he says we're sinners. We're neither righteous nor good. How many of you think you're good sitting here this morning? Well, the only way, the only way I'm good this morning is by the grace of God. Because God is the giver. We're neither righteous nor God. Jesus, uh, righteous nor good. Christ still had to die. It's what the Bible tells us. For him that knew no sin became sin for us. Christ didn't become a sinner. He took on our sin. But then one of the strongest words in all of the word of God to me is that in verse 10, notice what he said. He says we're enemies against God. Well, just so you know, you may come this morning and check the box and wrote a check and showed up. But if you're here this morning without Jesus, guess what? The Bible says you're an enemy of God. You're an enemy. And that's who we are without Christ. When we've not accepted the gift from God. But in Romans 5.11, I, I love this in Romans 5.11. I didn't read it, but let's do it. I've got it on the screen for you. Listen, watch this now. Look on the screen. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we now have received the reconciliation. Uh, in other words, Paul is saying in Romans chapter 5, this is who we are, but because of Jesus Christ, this is now who we are. And we can rejoice in that reconciliation. Why? Because we've received the gift from God. We've received Jesus Christ. That reconciliation, that's a word that literally means a gift that has been received. But oftentimes where we get in trouble as Christians is we don't, did you know, look at the screen. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of the, where we get in trouble sometimes is we think that the only place and the only time that we're going to be able to rejoice is when we get in heaven. That's not what Paul is saying. Paul says you need to rejoice right now that you're a Christian. You need to rejoice right now that you've been covered, your sins have been covered by the blood. You, some of y'all, I, I still question some of y'all, I think the only time you're going to smile is when you get to heaven, and I doubt that for some of you. Hey, that rejoicing, that joy in the Sunday school lesson this morning, when the disciples leave Jesus, how did they leave? They left joyful. Well, what do you... Hey, that's beautiful. Why? Because they've seen the risen Lord. I'd be smiling too if, some, if Grandpa came... If Pop Raymond came back to life today, I'd smile. You know what that means? Hey, we need to go back to the... In case you're walking around with a long face and you're upset with something, you got wind in your jaw about someone. Hey, go back to the moment you were saved. Paul says, now's the time we rejoice. We can rejoice now as Christians. We can have joy in our life now as Christians. Why are we able to do that? Because we've received the gift. We've received Jesus. Have you ever thought about, I love watching, I, you I love watching social media, Facebook. I love watching Facebook because it, now, because of Facebook, you can take people on the trip with you wherever you go. And I watch some, I don't, I, I, I don't mean y'all by I stalk your Facebook page, but what I mean by that, and you know what I'm talking about, when people are going somewhere, they'll take pictures along the way. There'll be the welcome to Georgia or welcome to Florida. And if it's Walt Disney, uh, that big green uh, uh, Walt Disney uh, DOT sign, uh, welcome. And, and in other words, we're going right along that trip with you when, when you when you post that. Some of you, I don't care where you're going, for some reason you're going to swing by Bucky's. Even if you've got to go 30 uh, hours out the way, we've made it to Bucky's. We had to stop. Okay? I don't get, but it's okay. You're excited. You ever been going somewhere and you get, let me, let me bring it home for you real quick. Let me make it personal. Uh, I, I, I love going to Mount Airy. I've only been a couple of times, but when I really get excited about going to Mount Airy, uh, Mount Airy is when I see Pilot Mountain. Uh, you know, you're getting close to Mount Airy. Uh, and we see that excitement. Uh, see, that, that's the way it should be for, for, for believers. We should be, uh, don't smile at the destination. Have joy as a Christian during the journey. 
Why? Because we received, we received a gift of what God has given us. It's a gift that we should be rejoicing in. I, 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 I read a book last week titled Together on God's Mission. And Mr. Phil, I, I, I had original thought. There was this part of the book I was reading. It was written by one of my professors, Dr. Scott uh, Hildreth. And uh, it's, it's, it's called Together on God's Mission. And inside my journal, then inside my notes, and then inside my sermon, uh, I wrote this original thought. Now, I'm just going to share it with you. It's not going to do anything for you, but just listen to my heart a second. Uh, uh, after reading a, a certain part of this book, I wrote this down. God established an individual relationship with Israel so his son could establish a relationship with individuals. Thank you, Mr. Terry. The whole purpose of the relationship with Israel was so Jesus could come and have a relationship with you. And that, should, that ought to be enough to make a Baptist shout. But it won't. Uh, John, John the Baptist. John the Baptist saw the gift. What did he say? He said, there goes. Watch this now. He said, there goes the Lamb of God. But he didn't stop there. What did he say? He said, there goes the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The gift. The giver is God. I want you to see the gift real quick. The gift is grace. Oh, did you see that in verse 7? The gift is grace. But to each one of us, grace was given. Grace. We don't deserve anything from God. Every sports team may get a trophy. Every player may get a medallion. But sir, ma'am, at the end of the day, we don't deserve the grace God has given us through Jesus Christ. It is unmerited favor. Can I help you? I just want to help you this morning real quick. I, I know some of you, you struggle with witnessing. You struggle with sharing your testimony. You struggle. And you'll, tell, you'll give me the excuses that I can't, I, can't, I can't memorize Scripture. Yes, you can. You just chose not to. But I want to help you this morning. I'm, I'm not, you didn't come to get beat up on. I know that. But I wanna, that's why I want to help you. I want to give you a one word. I want to give you a word you can memorize to explain the gospel. One word. Can you, will you memorize it? One word. It covers the gospel. You ready? Write it down. Is your pen in hand? Here it goes. Grace. Grace is a one word definition for the entire gospel. And if you're a child of God this morning, I kind of like to think you have an understanding of what Christ has done for you in your life. There's your word. When you talk to someone, grace. Well, what's grace? Well, I didn't deserve Jesus, but God gave me Jesus. And He died for my sins. One word definition of the gospel is grace. In John chapter 9, one of my favorite stories in the Bible. In John chapter 9, Jesus heals a blind man. <laughs> and bless their heart, they carried him to the cold water committee right after his healing. And he stood before the Pharisees. And what they say? what they say? They said, give God the glory. Because we know that this man that did that to you is a sinner. And in John chapter 9, verse 25, this is what the man said, and I quote. I don't, well, maybe I shouldn't quote, because this is the way I say it. The man said, maybe he is, or maybe he ain't, but this is what I know. I once was blind, but now I see. Grace. Grace. That marvelous grace. But you know what makes grace grace? There's only one thing that can be done with grace. Listen to me. There's only one thing that can be done with grace. 
And that's what makes grace, grace. Because what makes grace, grace is that grace can only be given. That's what makes grace, grace. Is that it's given. It has nothing to do with the recipient. It has everything to do with the giver. And because of this gift, and because God loved us so much, yes, we get heaven. And yes, we get hope. But the greatest gift of all is at the moment of salvation. Not only do we get heaven, not only do we get hope, we get Him. We get Jesus. We get the Holy Spirit coming right with us, walking with us, supplying all the need, supplying all the blessing, supplying all the gifts that we're going to receive. We get it from Jesus. We get it from Him. But that ain't how we operate. Let me give you an illustration. I'm going to close. That's not how we think. Let me give you, let me give you an example. If you're here this morning and you're married, if you're married, let me tell you what you've done. You made a selfish decision based upon who you're going to marry. I don't care how you slice it. Because who you married was based upon your opinion. Even me. You somehow, some way went through the thought process, is this somebody I want to marry? Is this somebody that I want to give all my time to? Is this somebody I want to give my life to? Is this somebody I want to give all my love to? Is this somebody I want to give all my thoughts to? Tell me you didn't. By the way, if you didn't, maybe you should have. That's how you made your decision of who you're going to marry. It was all based upon you. And guess what? When I did it, Rhonda, I checked all the boxes with Rhonda and I married her. Tell me I'm wrong. But that's not the way with God. Because when it comes right down to it, we couldn't meet none of that requirement. The reason we have grace today is not because of us, but because of God. He did every bit of that for us. Not because He had to, but because He wanted to. Balcony, y'all okay? Have you received that grace? Have you? I want to invite you today, if you have it, for you to come. Or talk to me, talk to Pastor Zach. As Miss Rhonda comes, would you stand? The giver is God. The gift is grace. Would you come? I'll be right down front here this morning to meet you. Whatever's on your heart, whatever's on your mind. If you've taken those, that gift for granted, would you come this morning and tell God you're sorry? And this morning you want to come and thank God for the gift of grace. Would you come? Good morning. Thank you so much for being with us this morning with our online services here at Soldier Bay. We were so, we're so glad that you joined us. Here on the screen, you see our email address and our phone number to the church office. Is God dealing with you about something this morning? We would love to pray with you. We would love to speak to you. If we can help you during this time of a prayer concern or, or maybe it's your relationship with the Lord. Maybe it's your walk. Whatever your spiritual need is this morning, please feel free to reach out to us. As always, God is good all the time. Thank you. God bless.